the MiG-29 infrared search and track called COLS, which stands for Quantum Optical Locator System. The Soviet Union's first try at a dogfight-focused IRST. It scans with a 14-element sensor in search and 6 in track using a Cassegrain mirror setup. I wanted to make a quick video to share my recent test results trying to find the ranges of this Iris T so I could better use it in a fight and know what to expect with this sensor that so intrigued the West and was the Soviet Union's specialty in the late Cold War. My results of the Iris T ranges are thus. As you see, the difference between aircraft is actually pretty small, usually 10 kilometer front aspect detection or a little more, a little less than 15 kilometer in side aspect, and 20 kilometer or less in rear aspect, and double these ranges if they are using afterburner. So not absolutely awesome, but of course, still very useful. In addition, if you are looking down at the target enough, the hot ground behind the enemy can decrease the range about one third. And if they have clouds behind them, it might also decrease the range a small amount. And if they enter a cloud deep enough, you might lose lock entirely. As for helicopters, they can be detected about seven kilometers away. Uh, aspect doesn't matter, which is thankfully fixed over FC3, where we could detect helicopters three times farther away behind and in front. And the helicopters have the same penalty for look down. Like I mentioned before, your best bet using the Iris T search mode is to decrease gain a lot to the point that the only dots you really see are targets. Additionally, we can use KMOD ranging to get a one time range by using the control button or the target acquisition button depress. <laughs> okay. I'll just mention some co-op tricks since there'll probably still be a bit before I do a co-op video. Here's one. Lock however you like with the helmet, opt mode, vertical scan, even in radar mode. And if you're sure that the Iris T is in range, if you're using radar mode, you can then switch to the Iris T search mode. Make sure that your radar is then put from Illum to Dummy and the co-op switch is on. Then, once an Iris T search with those two switches set, you will get radar ranging up to 25 kilometers and max missile range indicated. It will set off enemy RWR as a search mode, but not track. And you can press lock a second time to force the radar into STT and be able to fire a FOX-1. And only with your radar in STT can one sensor pick up the lost lock of another as well. So um, having your radar in STT like this will also make your lock much harder to lose. If you enter laser range, the radar will go STT on its own. I must also mention a limitation. In Iris T co-op, the radar is only using the pursuit mode of the radar. So this means that it cannot lock a target going over 1100 kilometers an hour head on. So, this means that if you have a supersonic target coming at you head on and you lock them with IRST co-op mode, your radar won't be able to lock on at the maximum distance that you lock them. However, 
it will lock them once they are within 10 kilometers, um, even if they're going way over supersonic. So I can only guess that it is also using some sort of close combat waveform to do this. So to summarize, if you're using co-op Iris T, you can get a lock. If the enemy is going over 1100 kilometers an hour head on, and you press lock a second time to make the radar go STT, the radar won't be able to lock on until they're within 10 kilometers. And in radar mode, as long as the radar power switch is an Illumina dummy, turn on the co-op switch. This will allow the Iris T to pick up lost radar locks, if it can, of course. And this might include even if the target notches you. In such a situation, when the Iris T picks up a lost radar lock, it will cue the radar. So if you had, say, fired an R27R or ER, while you had had a full radar lock and it switches to iris t because you lost radar lock while the missile was flying the missile will keep guiding and can still hit meaning that as long as you're close enough for the iris t to pick up the radar lock they can't really notch you if you had already fired a missile before the notch Unlike FC3, where we could blip the radar on for a second with Iris T lock to IFF, we have to IFF differently in the full fidelity module. Step one, get Iris T lock in any mode. Step two, switch to Iris T search mode and press lock a second time to turn on and lock the radar in STT. Step three, Switch to radar mode. If friendly, you will see a C on top of the HUD as long as your friend or foe lock switch is switched back. Step four, you can switch back to Iris T mode even if you're beyond laser range in Iris T search or vertical scan or beyond 10 kilometers in opt or helmet, the radar will go back to search mode when switching to that mode and stop giving the enemy a lock on their RWR. Move the radar to Illum to turn the radar off completely and you can still use Kmod for ranging if you want to be completely silent on their RWR. And be aware that your switch in front of the throttle that stops you from locking friendlies, um, if it's in the position that stops you from locking friendlies, when you switch to radar, um, your radar will be in search mode. But when you switch back to Iris T mode, it might still be locked. Um, but really, it's probably best to turn it off for this. Um, in which case, you'll see the C symbol, because when that switches off, it lets you lock friendly. In addition, you might be able to detect and lock someone for a second beyond max range. But this is really just ED modeling the small probability of detection. If we compare to our best FOX2 missiles, the R27 TET has a little more than half the range in front aspect 
and the R73 has a little less than half the range in front aspect. Also, <laughs> I mentioned in my radar and Iris T video that it is currently unimplemented that if you have a non-co-op mode Iris T lock, it will switch to radar ranging after eight seconds of being out of laser range. I'm beginning to suspect that the late software version that ED is simulating is actually using KMOD to replace radar ranging and non-co-op Iris T locks. So I suspect that what we have now might be correct with radar ranging only in co-op Iris T search mode and the only methods of ranging in non-co-op mode being laser and K-mod. Okay, so that's really it for these Iris T ranges to expect. Go out there and use your unique sensor that Blue 4 will not see coming. Oh, and some other facts before I go. Yes, these ranges aren't the best. Um, the MiG-23 MLA MLD and the MiG-25 PD PDS, which use the same TP-23M Iris T, they could lock at a longer range, but it was not designed for within visual range fighting. It, it, it could only look up a few degrees and it did not work with the radar except for ranging. The Su-27 Iris T like the MiG-23 Iris T, likely uses a better sensor material that gives it better range, uh, around 15 kilometers in front and 50 kilometers uh, in the rear aspect, as well as giving you twice the azimuth and elevation range in terms of gimbal limit that we get in Coles. So if we ever get a Su-27, expect its Iris T to be a more powerful weapon. That being said, knowing how to use the MiG-29 coals, I bet we will be able to throw a lot of Blue 4 pilots off balance.